Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Event Icons. I'm Laura Lopez with Social Tables, and uh, we're doing a semi-live live, um, in the Social Tables office in Washington, D.C., joined by our friend Sean. So what's, what's up? I wish Billy was here from Ireland live in D.C. It'd be a fun night, man. I'll tell you that. I have some tea, some green tea, so yeah. throwing it down hard. That will be awesome. Um, all right, so we have an awesome show for today. Um, we are joined by Billy May, and um, if you don't know Billy, you should know him. He is a filmmaker, a TV show producer, and he is the man behind Power of Video. It's a huge, huge event. He's um, the co-founder, and so he's huge into filming, photography, travel, drones, gaming, and pretty much everything related to that world. Um, so I'm looking, I'm looking to learn a ton today about video uh, from Billy. Um, fun fact about Billy, which I don't know if we want to start with this or not, but why not go there? Fun fact, uh, one time Billy streaked in Hyde Park, which is one of London's eight royal parks. So with that, welcome Billy. Welcome Billy to the show. I didn't know that about you, Billy. I didn't know <laughs> that about you. There'll be no streaking today, I promise. <laughs> yes. So we like to start every show with uh, one question, and that question is, what got you into the events industry? What got me into the events industry? Oh, my goodness. Um, wow. Uh, essentially what happened was um, we were a film production company. We've been working on a TV show for a couple of years. Um, we've attended lots of events. Um, we've seen Gary Vaynerchuk. We've seen Philip Bloom, who's a big filmmaker here in the UK. Um, seen events like uh, VidCon in LA, uh, and said, "Well, you know, why don't we do an event? Why don't we have our own event and and get some YouTubers over and just, you know, Northern Ireland's a small place, um, but we're creative here." And I um, said, "Let's just do it." So. Basically, with, with four weeks to go, um, we, we decided to make an event, um, and uh, foolishly, maybe, it, <laughs> some would say, but it was a huge success, and uh, we learned a heck of a lot, so uh, I, you know, I can honestly say that anybody can do it. You know, they, could, they could build and, and, and you know, go from strength to strength, and, you know, just follow a couple things. But, yeah. So I think, I think we'll get deeper into to the power of video itself. There's a lot to talk about there, which is super cool. But before even the power of video, what else have you been doing around the event industry? You know, both. I know we can get into the wedding side, but I mean, just from a film perspective, some of the cool stuff you've been a part of. Um, we've done a lot of just kind of events, uh, video wise, for companies like Red Bull. Um, we've worked uh, with Diageo, who's a big uh, drinks manufacturer. Um, we've been all over the place, kind of doing that kind of stuff, and I, and, and I honestly don't know exactly how it started, but. Um, you know, you just have to keep uh, pushing on with your work, and, and um, hopefully, be, you stay visible to some of these big companies, and uh, you know, we get blessed to that. I guess I don't know. <laughs> so, and um, who was the first big company that you had uh, that you landed as a client? Um, it was probably Diageo um, was one of the first big companies that we we landed, um, and it was actually via my wedding company that. That let that happen. So um, they saw what we were doing and thought it was a little bit different. Uh, so they said, "Well, can you can you do what you do? Uh, we'll explain that later. But can you do it for a Christmas ad?" And basically, um, it went uh, to their global audience on all their different channels and everything. So very cool. So so a little we we haven't dove much on the event icon show into the wedding side of events, uh, which we've talked about future shows. You know, starting to get into that. You're you're pretty heavy on the wedding side, uh, even up yeah. into celebrities and some bigger guys. But but tell us a little bit about kind of your take, maybe a little bit about Mariokis on. Okay. Things. Um, again, another another thing that kind of started as as I want to say a bit of a fluke. Um, we filmed a friend's wedding with a camera that we had just gotten. Um, it was really my first experience with a DSLR, and we found out that it shot video. And we had seen a kind of a lip sync music video type thing um, online and said, well, we can do that. And so we did that. 
and it's a surprise for them. And uh, like put it together, and a couple weeks later, it had sixty thousand views. And at that time, that was essentially a viral video. You know, back in two thousand and ten, like that was a lot of views for that. Um, got lots of press for that, and that's kind of just took us onto the client, the bigger client. So it kind of just takes one little thing to completely sort of change your, you know, the flow of your life and everything. So. It's true. So, so Mariochi, to give you a little more background, mm -hmm. it's basically lip syncing to, okay. to famous songs. Uh, okay. And so Billy's got over 8,000 subscribers on his channel, uh, total views in the millions, uh, and some, some classics recently. You've been, what, featured on ABC and a couple different uh, publications, kind of this yeah. fun thing to do at weddings, right? Yeah, I mean, it... it we just kind of kept going with it and said, well, let's let's see how far we can go with it. And um, we've been almost everywhere with it. We've been as far as Sri Lanka with it, which is, you know, off the coast of India. And then the other way, we've been Las Vegas, um, New York, Chicago, Paris. I'm going to Egypt next week. So it's, it's kind of become this random phenomenon that I never saw myself doing. But um, it's cheesy, but we, we enjoy it. So. It works. Let's get into the bones. I, I yes. know Laura's got a great question coming up. Well, actually, we have a question in from a friend, a friend, uh, Brant Kruger. Hey, Brant. Um, and he asks, is it cake? So I'm not sure if he means is it easy to do mariokis or I can read that question in so many ways. Uh, I obviously like cake. I know, either I, way. I also <laughs> like cake. Yeah, so Brant, um, if you're still on, let us know. Yeah. If you can elaborate on our question a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, don't. yeah I, don't, I don't know what he was referring to. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll respond to that. No, it's it's not easy. Um, yeah. it, a lot of times it, it's paired with another video that we do because we, we don't want to do just a cheesy video and just completely wreck someone's wedding. So we do we do a bit of both. So you're doing a, a normal wedding video and you're also doing another video as well. So it, mm -hmm. it's actually very hard to get all the logistics down um, mm -hmm. and still get what they need done. So it's not... Super easy. On special day. Get a, you yeah. Get yeah. 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 It, you know, the fury of a bride, if you mess up her wedding day, I'm sure is, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> um, Knock on wood. Think, there's no wood there, but don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not an option. Um, all right. So, uh, next question. We want to know a little bit more about power of video. What is it? How did you get started with it? Okay, well, um, my business partner uh, and I just literally had this, this, this idea to bring a big conference in Northern Ireland. It's a little bit further behind than the rest of the UK. Um, we've never had anything like it. There's been sort of things like it in London on you know, the mainland, but we're, you know, we're an hour flight away. We're, we're an island off of a, a continent, you know, a second island off of a continent sort of. So we said, Let, let's just try and contact some some YouTubers and see if we can get some people to come and uh, you know travel around Northern Ireland and we'll get all these companies to essentially pay um, like all the hotels or the flights or whatever and then say you know we're just going to take them around Northern Ireland and then we're going to have a conference so I thought well if we could treat them a bit to a good time and they could enjoy themselves um, and enjoy the beauty that I've seen here then maybe you know maybe they won't charge like, a huge absorbent fee you know and so we can get some bigger names for people uh, you know, it's our first year. We we're, were unproven um, at the time, and uh, we had a fantastic turnout. Um, Casey Neistat was there. Uh, Sean Duris was there. Um, a guy named Kian Toomey, who's from Ireland, who has 5 million Facebook likes, was there. So, I mean, there were some big heavy hitters there. Um, and we, we they, they all kind of, like, got to know each other as well in a different way than a normal event would have been where they just fly in for the, the conference. You know, they're in a green room, and... And then they're, they're away, so they got time to actually kind of gel together. And now I'm actually watching their vlogs and seeing, well, these guys have actually become friends, and it's sort of a little bit to do with something that I created, which is kind of makes me feel good about it. But um, their content is stronger because of it, and um, I just I, it's just interesting to see like you can actually change even multimillionaires. You can change their little path ever so slightly. So um, yeah, it was it was a huge uh, huge. Um, he's success. I really enjoyed it. So we, so we have a lot of planners. We have a lot of just kind of different aspects on the show of, of our viewers. Give us 
what it's like to book Casey Neistat. I mean, what's the process to find this? Really gonna be right now, he, he's probably the hottest guy on YouTube. He's won all these awards recently. I mean, how do you get his attention enough yeah. to come out for three days to Ireland? Uh, what that it mean? was <laughs> it was a gauntlet. I have to be honest. Uh, the he's represented by William Morris. I don't. I'm not ashamed to say on that, but they're the biggest talent agent in the world. Um, I am not a legal person, you know. I'm I'm a creative person, so dealing with them, I I mean, it was literally like, you know, going to the Citadel. I don't know, <laughs> you know, getting um, but um, we we had a film that we made called Drone Blender, um, which is we we took a a drone and we chopped a bunch of a bunch of fruit up. Um, with a super slow motion camera, um, and basically thought, well, I know how to get Casey's uh, interest in both our film and maybe seeing us on the radar. So we we actually packaged that drone up um, and locked it with some padlocks and shipped it to his office. And at that time, he was actually opening stuff for mail time, and um, he had gotten quite neglectful and like not opening anything. And we're like, oh gosh, we just wasted like an absolute fortune of money because we sent this like huge box. And lo and behold, one of the days, suddenly he's 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 using an angle grinder to grind these locks off, um, and and basically that kind of put us on his radar, I think. And then um, we got a couple of emails, kind of, that we were able to kind of open the door a little bit, and uh, it wasn't easy, but it happened. Uh, so there you go. The creativity, the yeah, a key in that one. It's yeah, sending a box from Ireland <laughs> to a guy in New York, and and. Make him get into it. So yeah, it was, it was about a hundred bucks that we didn't have at the time either, as well. So you know, like, are we burning like a hundred bucks just to send someone a broken drone? You know, so yeah, so, it worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you go about leveraging? You know, since you're working with such big YouTube stars, how do you leverage their audiences um, yeah. that those YouTube stars are bringing in? Um. We have done work with the tourist board here. We've done work with big hotels and big restaurants. So I sort of had them in my pocket anyway. And I said, listen, these guys are going to come. They're going to vlog anyway. Like, you're not going to be able to ask them to, like, vlog about your place. But if you make something cool, they need content for their vlogs. So, you know, essentially they're going to they're gonna advertise your spot if, you know, we treat them right. And we never asked them to vlog. We never asked them to do anything specific about, you know, having any type of um, endorsement for the places that we took them um, and made sure that the, that the businesses knew that. But um, we were essentially able to leverage their audiences and get about 18 million views on Northern Ireland over the course of when they were here. So um, we felt that was really successful. And the tourist board was actually like, Oh my goodness! Like you bought an event to us, and we spend tens of thousands of pounds, which is you know tens of thousands of dollars, um, on these big videos that get 500 views. You know, and and this is this keeps happening. They keep spending money on videos that aren't getting views because they're not putting them out right. I'm like, listen, you could go and get 10 of these guys, and they're just gonna immediately be able to bring you you know 50, 100 times that. So it was a random thing that we just thought, and we just went for it, and. Um, I guess sometimes things work, so it just we're lucky. I think that kind of plays into the next question. This is from the audience, uh, from Abigail. She asked, "How did you manage to improve your marketing strategies to reach a wider audience?" I knew that plays into 2017. What are you going to do for Power of Video in 2017 to reach even, even wider? Um, we're going to bring on a bigger travel partner. Um, I think from, from the first part because the thing that actually limited us was the people that we could bring in and that and the biggest cost was was the flights um, and we, we kind of took over all that and, and had to pay that um, and we're like well you know you're literally holding these people in your hand you're like oh, can we take this guy can we trade this guy can we, you know how do we get these people here to, to essentially do that but at the end of the day it was it was essentially a big ad for our video production company um, you know, we couldn't have gotten what we spent on the, the conference. Well, you know, if we spent that on just advertising our company, people it would have just gone away. It would have been in the back of a magazine. It would have been a, a TV or a radio ad or something. But essentially, it was just an ad for look at our video production stuff, and we actually have gotten stuff off the back of that. So there's different ways that we're gonna do it next year, but essentially gonna keep it the same and just kind of make it a bit bigger. 
So, so a couple, so I've, I've worked with Billy a little bit on the event and, and kind of knew a lot of the details. So, so just to give some insight, they had this, it was an experience more than just an event. Like tell, tell us a little bit about how you took, I guess it would be, I always get these confused, all the fans out there. If you remember Lauren and I, about six episodes said D In DMC? I'm really bad with synonyms, so uh, yeah. If anybody out there, that was embarrassing. Can you I'm clarify sorry. a little bit. I don't yeah, know. DMC, CVB, DVD, DVR, I mean, DVR, CSCP, CMP. There's just so I'm, many. I'm so lost. I'm so yeah. lost. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to try to throw out any acronyms because I don't know. But yeah. how you leverage? You start. You kind of talked about using. You know these venues and hotels. Tell even more though about the experiences that you had planned with Casey and okay. Sean, Ben Brown, all these guys. I mean, yeah, using they... them to leverage, you know, using these other businesses to leverage their power and kind of the combination. I think this goes to Abigail's question too of your your marketing and experience together. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you take something like a hotel, and essentially a hotel, uh, someone staying at night in a hotel doesn't cost anything. It's just their perceived value for that. So I took them a proposal and said, listen, you give me this amount of rooms and you feed them while they're here. And I can't promise what's going to happen, but I can show you examples of what's going to happen. And so we, luckily we, have enough, we had a good enough relationship with the hotel for them not to just like chase me out the door. You know? <laughs> so, um, so, I mean, from the hotel standpoint, it's just the smallest thing. You know? Sorry. Like directly from the hotel even. Don and Casey did a video where they jumped off the roof, yeah. which had tons, yeah. millions of, you know, it's, it, that's a, just one little touch point. What, yeah. what are some of the other experiences they went through? Um, so, I mean, we, we went and did a Game of Thrones experience. Obviously, Game of Thrones is huge for, well, the entire world, but it is filmed partially here in Northern Ireland. Um, and there's a castle here called Castle Ward. Um, and they have a teepee there, you put on the cloaks, um, the dire wolves are there, you do archery and uh, you eat like you're in Game of Thrones. So we thought, well, that, that would be awesome. Um, that one wasn't a freebie, that's something that we paid for that we felt was something really cool to do. Um, and we, but we knew that it would, it would take a box with the tourist board. Um, they've been really good to us and we're like, well, let's, let's come up with something that would be really interesting. They would entertain the guys, give them stuff for their vlogs, and take another box. So that was the kind of stuff that we were, the kind of road that we were thinking on. So everything had to take multiple boxes. Um, they did some rally car driving. Um, they were picked up by DeLoreans at the airport. The DeLorean was made here in Northern Ireland. So even seeing three of them together are a bit rare, um, but there's not many left. Um, so we, we just tried to tie in Northern Ireland and everything, something exciting for their vlogs and something that they would. Uh, naturally just put in there and it would excite their viewers and stuff. So that was kind of the thought for everything that we did with them. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think something we can all learn is, is using your resources. Uh, I was coming to, to D.C. For, out of Phoenix. And I was like, where am I going to do my show, whatever? And I'm like, what, 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 why would I not use all the people here connected in D.C.? And so, you know, I think the DeLorean was like the DeLorean Association, right? It wasn't like... It was, specific, yeah. Well, or something. I mean, you went. You had to go to like down to the dudes who just love the cars for loving them, and, and ask them to like help you. Out. Yeah, um, I, and I think you know people can see a vision. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be Casey Neistat. Um, it doesn't have to be a DeLorean. You know, it could be anything. Uh, use your resources that you have available to you because everybody knows somebody that does something. Um, we used to have a little book. Um, at my church when I went to church back in, in the States, and there was always like, what, who does what, that kind of a thing. And it was a book of like, oh, this guy cleans gutters, or this guy paints houses, or you know, that kind of thing. Like, get your toolkit together and like, figure out who you know that does what, and you'd be surprised at what you can pull together, because people are willing to, to do anything for you, you know, if, if you treat them right. You know? So um, one of my friends just started a new company called Streamhouse, and um, he actually live streamed the entire event um, which would have cost us a, a crazy amount of money, but all the stuff for the screens was all done by my good friend who just started a new business. So, um, wow. you use the people that you have around you, you know, and you're gonna have to do favors for them back at some point. But um, mm -hmm. use your use your use your tools, you know. So 
So as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of Billy. Uh, <laughs> Alex, so, like I know what he's going to say next. But using your tools, your friends, Billy and I have had a great connection over the last, what, six, eight months. Yeah. Billy was the reason, actually, that I got to sit down in Gary Vaynerchuk's office for all those Gary V fans out there. Woo! So I owe wow. to Billy making it happen. <laughs> Uh, had a, had a picture with Alex uh, from the Daily V Show. You know those guys, uh, D Rock, um, which it just all comes back around, right? And I've and hopefully given some back to Billy with some, some of the insights and connections. So it's always help everyone else out. You know, give back. At IMAX recently, unfortunately, mm -hmm. there, but Will and I got to meet just all, all these amazing icons, and they all you know gave references and said, "Oh, you should talk to this person and that person." And so that's a huge part of I think of this industry and any industry is is obviously helping each other out. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I and I think even in the, especially in my industry, the film industry, there's a lot of people that want to hide secrets and, and keep off to themselves. Like, oh, I'm going to lose a bunch of business or, or we're going to lose clients if we slip up in this one area. But we actually partnered with another event company because we've never done an event. So um, they're a company called, um, called an event called Digital DNA um, here in Belfast. And we said, well, listen, you've done this before. We'll kind of piggyback on your event. And if we have some people that want to come to ours, you know, you can send them over, and if we have people that want to come to yours, then we can send them in. And it, it wasn't huge, like, the amount of people that went back and forth, but um, they were happy to help us because we're not in direct competition with their same clientele. So, like, maybe find someone that doesn't do the exact same thing that you're doing, but you can use it in a different way, maybe. I don't know. This, this would be my advice for those kind of things. Good piece of advice. Yeah. Um, so we have a question in from Twitter, and it's totally unrelated to what we've been talking about thus far, but this is coming from Event Collab. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Sometimes Billy sounds Irish. <laughs> Mostly he doesn't. How long has he lived there? Where from originally? So where are you from, Billy? I, I'm from North Carolina. North Carolina in the South. Uh, Charlotte specifically. Um, been here for about 11 years. I moved over here um, in 2006 when I married my lovely Irish wife. So that's why um, I have a, deed a deedly deedly going on with my accent. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Any kids? Uh, I have two kids, two amazing kids, yeah. They're in, they're, I think they're asleep. We're burning the house down. <laughs> so. Yeah. And what was that like when you Move. Did you own your company at the time? Um, big moves are scary, so especially one across the pond, as they I, say. Yeah, I mean, I, I essentially moved almost right out of college, so I had nothing really when I came over except a suitcase and kind of amassed from there, you know. Had to buy all my geeky stuff again, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's home now. I still go home uh, quite frequently and go back to the States, but. Um, you know, the, you get to a place, and it, after a while, it does feel like home. So, it does feel like home. So, you gotta get more of the accent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love the accent. You got you. Yeah. I love the even more, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so. So another you, great question uh, that we wanted to, to get with you on is, how do you see? I mean, I mean, you created this cool conference, power video. You know, bringing in these YouTube video, you know, YouTube stars, and kind of connecting them to the real world. But what? What do you see in events? Um, you know, how do you see this playing into the future of events? Videos. Um, can you uh, how do, how do the videos help with so events or how, how to... so Your clients hiring you to go shoot videos, at, whether yeah. it's a wedding or, or an event. You know, a traditional uh, yeah. event. How do you see it in the future? Um, well, I think. At the moment, the biggest thing right now is is some of the events that we're doing are sponsored by 20 different people, and they want to see where their money's been spent on, honestly, and they don't want to see a piece of paper that says, here's a graph, and this is how many people came, and this is how many people maybe saw your little roll-up banner or whatever. So we find ourselves doing a lot of kind of event highlights, and it sounds like grunt work, but we put a lot of heart and soul into making a really exciting little video for the people that can can look back and say, oh look, we sponsored this for a big money, and look, they actually did have our banner everywhere, people are enjoying it, and that's exactly what we wanted. So we feel like we're bringing value um, and maybe more sponsorship to events as they can see, you know, that when, once people start believing in, in an event and how much what's ha what's happening at it, then um, I think that maybe the, the sponsorship can go up. So uh, we feel like we're bringing more sponsorship money to people 
through our videos. So. And are you seeing any trends from clients, like think commonalities, interesting things that they're asking about? Um, and is there, do you have any expectations for uh, 2017 and the Power of Video Conference? What do you, what do you foresee in the future? <laughs> um, I think in the future that we will have less uh, polished videos. Um, I think everything, the medium is moving towards looking like a vlog. Um, a lot of clients don't want this polished slider thing. They're all wanting this homemade, homespun. Um, it, I don't know, the, 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 like the classic car commercial where it's just like like really expensive. They, people, clients aren't asking for that anymore. They want, they want something that looks like, that tells a story that's personal, but um, has a certain vibe to it, and I feel like it's it's like stripping back all of that stuff that that kind of Hollywood and and all those people like ran down our throats for so many years. You know, um, I think it'll be more homemade, more crafted, and um, maybe with a bit more heart. So that's kind of where I see um, video going in the future. Um, as far as power of video, we want it to be very cross community here. Um, Northern Ireland still has uh, has that divide that everybody kind of uh, the Irish divide thing between the British and the Irish, and then, and I always feel since I've been here that there is something to be done for kind of almost like a reconciliation of people coming back together and you know living with your neighbor, you know living you know you're living next to somebody, you can get along with them hopefully. So that's sort of how we see the video kind of supersedes everything. Everyone likes the same. TV shows and stuff, but you know, and that's the water cooler talk that everybody talks about. So why can't we just sit across the aisle and you know, enjoy something in the same place? That's that's sort of a, a roundabout way, I guess. Of what you're, I like you know. it. So, so what? So you've had a couple of videos. One of those being the blender video. Uh, one of those actually, subsequent from the power of video, had some virality to it when they found Casey's skateboard. So so. Casey Neistat and Sean Duras were in Belfast just cruising the city. Uh, one of them loses their skateboard in the water at the Power of Video conference. Someone else, some, some what was it, like a 12-year-old kid? Yeah. A real kid, nothing to do with the event, saw the video on YouTube, had his dad and his uncle or something dive with scuba dives and get the skateboard out <laughs> of the bottom of the lake, send it to Sean Duras, and that video has got millions of views on it. How, what, is there a formula? You've been around it enough now. You've, you've had your fingers in several viral videos. I mean, what, can you give some tips to some of these event planners who want to say, I want my event to, to have some virality to it? What does that look like? The, the very first thing that you have to do is literally not try and make it viral. Like, this is not going to happen. Like, <laughs> this is just not, yeah, that, there's, there's that balloon popped right there. But, um, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess think of something that's current. And try and and try and, and play on that. And I think the less scripted and the less uh, that it looks like it's been made by a company, the better. Um, we've made some kind of, I want to say like, fake vlog-looking music videos for people, where it looks like he's literally reaching across and like turning on the camera himself, but it's all lit and it's all hidden and it's all like a guy in a room kind of jamming on his guitar, but everything's mic'd and everything, you know. I guess trying to get that authenticity is is where the the, the virility is going to come from. I think so. Try and be authentic yeah. as authentic as you can be, and and hope you catch something that's a bit different. I think that kind of played into the next question I was going to ask was you know for planners looking to create video content for their events, what are some tips for creating that best content? Um, and I think it's so I, I you know we've been around a ton of events. Uh, Will Laura at you know. Sometimes it feels, you know, very staged. You know, guy standing in the middle of the street while people are walking across the crosswalk is a classic of the escalators with the big banner and green force in the background or whatever the conference is. It sounds like you'd suggest just more raw, real type footage. I mean, what? Give, give us some insight there. Um, I think, you know, if, especially if you're going to have someone speaking, you're going to need somebody that, that can actually um, rhyme off the script well without looking like they're rhyming off something to the to the camera. I think that's probably the hardest thing uh, when we're doing promo videos is trying to get someone that's actually comfortable in front of the camera. 
Um, so you get someone that's comfortable in front of the camera, and you you, you go and do something that is completely I don't know completely different. Uh, <laughs> depends on the event. So I mean, try and get access to the top of a crane or the top of a building, and you know just think outside the box and try and um, do something that looks really epic. You know, that's the other option is is just make it really cool looking. People people like cool stuff. You know, there's like if you look at people real awesome. There's a video series on YouTube. Um, and it's just epic stuff that people are doing all the time. So if you want, if you know, you want your event to look cool, then go and do something epic and get someone to talk about it while they're doing it. I don't know, hire a free runner. I don't know, think something <laughs> a little bit, a little bit crazy. So. What's the most outrageous request you've gotten from a client that you did oh and happened? <laughs> <laughs> or did it happen? I had Yeah. Hopefully that's not on video somewhere, but. I've had uh, I've had some really not safe for work ones, but um, I, I, ha I without fail I have clients ask me to fly the drone in really really dangerous places. Like you wouldn't believe what people ask. Um, between dancers and just all kinds of things like that. Um, there was I was filming today actually. There was a guy wearing a tutu. Um, and they thought they kind of felt like the joke that they made was appropriate, and I was like, it's kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> it just wasn't it wasn't really appropriate, you know. And this this guy's wearing a tutu, and he's like, it's a bit girly, and just the way he walked off, it's just like, guys, really, like this is what you want me to film and put on put on tape, but sometimes you just have to kind of. Actually, let you go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. There's probably all kinds of things that I've been asked to do that. So to maybe up. some of our, you know, new, newer planners uh, that that are kind of coming into the industry, looking at the event icons, is a great way to to pick the brain of, of an icon. Uh, what would you, being a first time creator of an event uh, that went well, what would you change though? If you could go back, you know, being that it was your first time, if you could go back and do another first time, what would you do different? Um, biggest thing would be starting earlier, planning, planning for longer. Um, we would definitely delegate. We'd have more teams. I literally, with my business partner, did everything. Uh, Damien and I did everything from driving the vans to paying people to, uh, you know, booking hotels and flights and everything. Like we literally did. Like there was nothing that we didn't do. Um, and I would say try and get some people that you trust and get them around you. Um, overestimate how much costs are because, my goodness, it's, you always could be like, we're gonna make we're gonna make five hundred thousand dollars on this event. I'm so excited, and then you're like, wait, we're not gonna make five hundred thousand. We're gonna spend fifty thousand or something. You know, whatever it is. But um, you know, be a little bit, rein yourself in a little bit. You know, because. Uh, you know, creativity tends to exaggerate. You know, I'm not a numbers guy, so uh, but I am creative. So you know, gotta have that person that's a numbers guy. Have somebody that that can help with different segments of, of what you're trying to do. Um, and advertise early could be my other thing. Is make sure you get your get the word out there. Um, but the the day once the day comes, there's literally nothing you can do, and you just have to. Roll with it and just enjoy it, or try to enjoy it. You know. Mm -hmm. And so you were coming from outside the industry. Now you're in the industry, and I think that one thing we can all agree on is that this is an industry that changes pretty much daily. There's always something new to learn. Um, how do you stay sharp on industry trends? Um, is there, you know, maybe like a blog that you read or um, or people that you talk to that always have something, something really good and useful to share with you. Yeah, I mean, being, I mean, my primary thing right now is, is I'm a filmmaker, so I we we make corporate videos. We, we you know we go to weddings and the event side of things is still very very new to us. We you know we still kind of I don't want to say stumbling our way through it, but we've learned a lot of lessons that. Um, we want to implement, and I, I think probably the best thing we're going to do this year is just to do it again and do it and learn, take the lessons that we've learned, and basically to get the team around us and to just you know do everything earlier, and just have another go at it because I think sometimes the best best way is to just 
exercise that muscle and just kind of blaze ahead. So maybe that's not exactly the best best philosophy for it, but icons um, in there. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I heard you freaking a Vin icon spit out somewhere like that's who I, I'm I follow. Icons. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Now, now we're good. absolutely absolutely so here's, a, here's another question uh that's actually coming in it's around uh you mentioned the power of video is a huge was kind of a huge advertisement for your own production company how did you convert and make new clients from you know those those leads and that exposure uh and any recommendations if companies want to use events to grow their company? So you used Power Video wow. in your own production company. How you know? Any suggestions there? Um, <laughs> one of our our things was that we wanted to have a, a business section in the morning that would really appeal to ad agencies and businesses. Um, here in Northern Ireland, it was very it's very hard to get listed as someone that an ad agency would use as a video company. Um, it's always a tendering process where people come and they get need to get three quotes and then you know blah blah blah. Hopefully you get get in there. Um, so we basically called up every ad agency in Northern Ireland and Ireland, even some in England, and and kind of gave them either discounted or free tickets, especially the ones that we wanted to work with. Um, so they all got kind of tickets to come and and enjoy something um, that was a bit different. Um, we looked very thoughtful and they got something out of it. Um, I guess that's kind of a kind of like slipping them twenty bucks. I don't know, <laughs> but um, I tell you what, if I would have just called them up and said, "Hey, I make videos, and here's my business card," I would have gotten nowhere. Um, but I mean, since Power Video, I mean, it was only in June that we we had the first one, and um, I think we've had four or five big agency jobs from clients that we did not have before, um, and those were people that were invited to. To the event, so I think the best thing you can do is is try and figure out a way to invite the people that you want to work with um, to the event. But you took big risks to to put this event on, right? I mean, you, you took massive financial risks, ma massive reputation. I mean, what if Casey didn't show up? What if Ben Brown didn't show up? I mean, what if these guys just decided not to participate? So, so I think it part of it is it takes you know takes yeah. a risk and and to get the reward, and so you had to. Put your name out there and go for it. And your clients, these potential clients, these these agencies you wanted to be in front of, came and saw and was like, "Wait, if Billy can pull these kind of people together and a beautiful video afterwards, obviously he could do that with our clients." And and it seems he's got some reach as well, you know, some depth of, of contacts. So, I think, yeah, I think I mean, yeah. take risk. I, I, the thing is that you know, calculated risk is is probably the best thing you can do for your business. You know, if you, you can't just stay stagnant in one place, you know. Ever if if you're you know seeing sales just like this, like straight across the board forever, you're never going to get any bigger, I think. And we just kind of said, I mean, there there are a couple reasons we did. I mean, one, of course, we wanted to meet Casey and Sean, like and Ben Brown, and I mean everybody that, that came. It was amazing. Um, selfishly, yeah, we that was a big thing. <laughs> but um, also, also, we've. The tourism board has so much money to promote Northern Ireland, and we always feel like hey, they, they're not really using this effectively. And we wanted them to believe in us too. So I mean, there's just like check boxes that we're like, let's do and just keep tying these kind of like little loops together, and hopefully that it'll bring in something that you know is workable. So not going to work for everybody. Not everybody's going to be able to do it, but um, I, we're, we were totally enthused by it. We love we love the whole process um, once it was over. <laughs> So. so we have another question in, and uh, this question asks, uh, what filmmaking skills like storytelling are the most valuable for an event professional to have? And if you yourself could recommend a film class for any professional to take, um, what would it be? Well, um, I think probably the most important thing um, for an event uh, videographer uh, would be to potentially get your in interview skills up, um, know how to mic quickly mic um, talent, um, and have questions already prepared in your head to be able to to, to know the way because that's going to shape the entire event video, depending on what these guys say. And you could literally make people say anything by with the questions that you ask them. So before we go to every event, we we have the the questions for the. Um, 
for the talent that we want to ask them. So whether it's the auctioneer that's a celebrity from TV or whatever, we, we have these questions to know which way that we're going to tell the story of the entire event and we bookmark that we book in the whole thing based on these interviews that we've already planned. Obviously you don't know what the event's going to be like. 90% of the time things are going to go completely different than what, are you, what you're told, but if you have the questions prepared ahead of time then you can always steer the entire video with the questions. Um, I never did a class. It was always um, kind of just going online and, and trying to emulate videos that I really enjoyed. Um, there's a company called Still Motion, obviously, oddly enough. I did not copy them, <laughs> but um, that's, that's uh, S-T-I-L-L uh, Motion, M-O-T-I-O-N, um, dot C-A, I think it is. Um, and they just have beautiful stuff, and I've been watching their stuff for five or six years or something. Um, and I always like, if I make corporate videos, I want them to look like that. And I just always, every time I go out, I strive to do the best and to make it look sort of like that. And from that, we've actually developed a very different style than what they have. But we, we knew we wanted, you know, something that, that had a vibe like what they were going for. Um, there's another filmmaker here called Philip Bloom. He's actually going to be a guest at Power Video next year. So he is about my filmmaking idol. Like if there's going to be one, it's going to be Philip Bloom. He's a local British guy. He's worked for the BBC. He's done all this travel, travel filming stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I think find some people that you like their stuff and, and figure out how they do it. A lot of them will have behind the scenes type uh, videos that will say, hey, this is how I did this shot or this is how I did this or check this gear out. These are my settings for my camera or whatever. And, and that's literally how we learn to do, from, you know, it's just building blocks. Everything is a, that's a little step that you have to take. So. And you alluded to this, but... Um... Is there anybody else who you consider super iconic when it comes to event video or just video in general besides um, Mr. Bloom? <laughs> uh, what are you looking for a specific person? Like, I mean, like YouTubers? I, I, Anyone. I, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously Casey and Sean and, and all the guys that, that we had over. Um, I love Devin Supertramp. I love his stuff. Um, it's just... I don't know, find the person that you want to be like and try to emulate it and then also, but also put your own spin on it. Um, I'm on YouTube probably a lot more than I should be. Um, mm -hmm. But I like to think that it's research. <laughs> um, right. You're working. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I'm working, darling. So, so before, we, before we do the show wrap up, kind of our, our last couple of questions we always like to ask people, how, how early in the process do you like to be involved with the event? Not as an event planner, you know, you doing the power of video, but a client coming to you and saying, hey, you know, we want to we do a video and we want it to look kind of like this and it's going to be at this venue. I mean, how, how, you know, just what's kind of the planning process to bring in production? We've, we've had everything from we have this date, you know, and we want you involved, you know, which is like we don't know anything, all the way up to you know, this is the couple days before, we didn't hire a videographer, and you got to land into this job, and, and I have no idea what's what's happening. Um, and sometimes they're international like that, and it's just it's crazy. Um, I'm happy at about two or three weeks, um, but it depends on how big the video project is. I mean, if you're if you're trying to get someone to live stream for your event, don't wait that long. <laughs> but most of the time, what we're doing is highlights videos, so we essentially just need to know when and where. Uh, and what's what what kind of stuff you want to get out of it, and the sponsors make sure they give us all the sponsor lists. So. Do you do a lot of you know sit down production style run of show, you know this angle, this shot, this interview? I mean, is that a big part of what you kind of plan when you're doing film for a, an event? Um, sometimes. I mean, it it depends on what the what the client kind of wants. You you know you kind of have to do it, but a lot of it's run and done because. The event is an ever-changing thing. You have one time to get it right. If, if someone's making a speech or if someone's doing, you know, bringing out food, you, you can't be like, "Oh, right, well, hold on a second, you bring that steak out again." You know, you have to get it while it's happening. It's not, it's not a commercial so, as such. So, um, I like to have a really good run of the events, like a, a really good time schedule, and so I know what's happening. So I'm not surprised by anything. Um, but every time clients will be like, "Well, we just thought we'd bring out a surprise," and they never think to tell. The videographer, so and that happens in weddings, weddings as well. 
Um, so, so all your plans secrets. <laughs> tell your video <laughs> Hey, we're bringing the cake out. If you, <laughs> if you want it in the video, just tell me. That's all you have to do. <laughs> so is that your number one tip for planners is just inform your videographer? I think so. I mean, uh, uh, and don't don't have unrealistic expectations as well. You know, if you're you're in you're in a, a white office building room or something, and don't think that's going to turn suddenly into some like really, I don't know, well lit, funky looking place. It's just going to be what what it is. You're gonna you're gonna see what's there. It's not gonna. There's no filter you can put on it to make it look better than it really is. You know, so I guess make it look how you want it to look. Let the videographer know what you want back from them, and then hopefully we can give it back to. Really, really, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we got a couple of kind of our our, our wrap up questions. One's actually from uh, Mary at what is that? Oh, Mary Baird Wilcock. She's over in the UK, so she's she's cool. over there. Hello, Mary. Um, if you, I think she's been on the show before. But Mary, if you have not been on the show, please be on the show. Um, so Mary says, um, well, one, hello from Nottingham, England. Um, so she has a question, and we've been talking about this entire time. What is the date of Power of Video 2017 she would love to attend? Oh, I like that. Um, tentatively, it is June 2nd, uh, 2017. That's a Friday instead of a Monday this year. So. Oh, okay. So you got the weekend. Perfect. And we're, yeah, we're going to throw some, uh, some curveballs in there, different venue. Um, and maybe a, a little food festival next door, so we're gonna kind of have like a change, change the game up a little bit. So very cool. And Mary wants to know, and it's, uh, maybe she has an event coming up. What are your starting rates for videography for live events, or how do they get touch with you regarding pricing? Yeah, we're closing. Um, yeah, we're closing a deal for you right now. <laughs> Do I have to pay extra? Is there like a finder's fee in this? Yes, there um, is. We'll send you the, the details after. Yeah, I've got the contract already written. Don't worry. Yeah, it, it, it just depends on lo like location. We don't change our prices for different clients. It's We have a standard rate card that we use for everybody. And um, I feel like the clients that come to us, you know, you know, they need to plan it into their budget early, but we give them back, I think, so much more. You, know, so. Um, you can always go to our website, speedmotion.co.uk. And check that out, or you can email me directly at Billy at speedmotion Perfect. And Mary out. actually had a follow up. She has a client event on Saturday, November twelfth, in Nottingham, England, and it says dot dot dot. Seriously, so we want to see this thing. We want to see this. This is going to be a direct yes. outcome from the event icon show. It's going to be I'll on send you. I send you like a. Buddies, we'll boost up. There. We'll share it on their their vlogs. This is gonna go. This is. That's gonna be great. This is, we're ready. We're excited. Great. Awesome. Do, do you does she do you want me to check my calendar, Mary, right now? Yeah, <laughs> Mary, Mary, jump in there. Let it, yes, please. Yes, yes. Uh, I am free. I am free. You both know where to go from here. <laughs> you gotta connect to Billy Mays. Billy, gotta connect to, to Mary. What's the best way to exchange the contact information? I mean, we're, we're already live. Mary, shoot us your email, and we'll get it to Billy. Yeah, put it in the chat if you could, and we'll connect you both via email. There it is. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. Making connections. There we yes. go. Yes. Awesome. Boom. <laughs> Mary says, boom. Thank you for joining us. Well, Man, thank you so much for having me. I wish I was in D.C. as well now. but. Uh, I know, because we could always – the crazy thing is you can't see – I'm going to just turn this around. We actually have an event happening Not right – Outside, look, there's an event that is taking shape in our <laughs> That's office. Right That's there. amazing. Probably could have used a videographer, just saying. Um, cool. Well, uh, we like to end every show um, with two very similar um, questions. Uh, one of two is if you could pick just one. Oh, no, we already did that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> there's only one last question. And do you have any new and cool resources you want to share? What's your uh, favorite website, blog, books, gadgets, uh, scuba masks, uh, Spotify? I don't, like, I don't like I don't like scuba masks. Uh, I, don't <laughs> um, I, I do a couple here. I obviously, um, powervideo.co.uk is one of my favorite resources. <laughs> I'm just sure. um, I I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk as well. I highly recommend going and checking out. 
the AskGaryVaynerchuk.com website. You can search through all of his blogs, get amazing resource for just his crazy brain and, and all of his great information. Um, I don't know if you guys can share that link with those guys. Um, and I, I use um, I use Wonderlist all the time. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's basically organizes my crazy brain into a check checklist that I can just check off, and I feel like I got an achievement for doing that. And uh, Receipt Bank. Keep your receipts, people. This stuff is tax deductible, but it's not tax deductible if you throw the receipts away. <laughs> your client doesn't, the accountant doesn't like when they're like, what's this thousand, uh, thousand pound bill for? I don't remember. I just paid it. You know, so there you go. And um, if you're streaming, if you're looking for a good streaming company in the UK, I highly recommend my friend Streamhouse. Um, he does all kinds of live streaming for events to the web. Um, he uses this Mevo, Mevo camera that's from Livestream for some of his smaller stuff all the way up to big other stuff as well. If, you, if you're on the show and you need a connection, Billy's just one of those guys to have. <laughs> he's got, I know he's got tiny phones. He's got a buddy in Arizona that turns phones into mics. He's got <laughs> a guy in New York called Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, he, he, he's a great guy to be in contact. So if somebody was asking for your contact information, we'll make sure to share mm -hmm. uh, your email address. The best way to get a hold of you. And if anybody wants to ask any other questions, they're more than welcome to shoot me something on Twitter or LinkedIn or anything. I'm, I'm an open book for the most part. You've got a killer Twitter handle, the Billy. Mm -hmm. Are That's there any cool. others? I don't know anybody else, really. Okay. Maybe. I don't know if you saw Casey's blog yesterday, Billy with an exclamation point. I think it's to you. I, I sent him wrong, that shirt. I sent him that shirt. Just, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. He well, had one with. It had said three billies on it, like the last show I watched. So, there you go. There it is. Okay, I don't see any other questions uh, coming in. We've, we've documented all the resources that you, you know, and you threw in some uh, direct links. We connected you and Mary to close the deal on November 12th, and we're going to watch that video when Mary releases it to the world, <laughs> if her client permits. Uh, and, yeah, we're excited to, to keep doing this. We do this every Wednesday, uh, nice. so those that are tuning and Billy, we need to get some more of your connections and people on the show. Uh, friends like Mary, we're, we're excited to have Alex on the show now. Uh, Alex Blackson as well is joining us. Woo. Uh, we'll keep we'll keep coming along. You guys keep watching. Uh, and yeah, if you had to jump off on today's recording and you came back, um, be sure to check the blog. Um, so this is put on typically by Will Curran of Endless Entertainment. You can catch the recording on his blog, and the address, which uh, will also be, uh, we'll put in the chat, is helloendless.com forward slash blog. And so you can see Billy's episode or binge out on all the previous episodes that we've done. I promise they're all a good time, so check them out if you uh, got the time. And if you want to keep the conversation going on Twitter, use the hashtag, hashtag event icons. And if you have any lingering, burning questions to ask uh, Billy, uh, be sure to hit him up on Twitter and then um, use the hashtag event icons. So um, with that, I think that show. show is a wrap. Thank it's you wrap. so much, Billy, for being a pa for a part of today's <laughs> show. It was great. Thank you for um, this. Oh, yeah. And yeah. thank you to everyone for logging on, and we'll, we will see you next week uh, where we'll interview yet another event icon. See you guys. See ya. Thanks, Billy. Peace. See you, brother.